Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of 60 Formula. Hope you're doing well today. Happy Wednesday. How's it going today to all the brothers and the sisters, the ladies and the misters? It's the middle of the week. We call that camel day or hump day, wh whichever one you prefer. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about why Siberian Huskies should be crate trained. If you're thinking about getting a Siberian Husky or you just got a Siberian Husky puppy, it's a good idea to definitely think about getting them crate trained. I know there's a lot of stigmas behind crates. They're like, oh, well, they're cages, so they're terrible. I'm gonna talk you guys all about crates today, all about cages when it comes to Siberian Huskies. So we're gonna crush some myths, we're gonna be talking some facts, and I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks when it comes to teaching your Siberian Husky to be professionally crate trained. Now I'd like to thank everybody that's been watching the episodes. I know it's been a couple days since I did a proper episode on the channel where I like speak in my 60 formula voice and I give you the hand and we get the Huskies. We just needed to let our creativity capacitor take a break for a couple of days so that we could make the best episodes for you. You're the best audience in the Husky community, so we gotta bring you some quality, baby. Some of that qual qual. And look at Britney Spears, he's like, yeah, that's right. That, that's the department I work for, quality assurance. So let's get into it. Let's talk about how you can train and teach your Siberian Husky to be crate trained in no time. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Before we get into today's episode, we wanna thank today's sponsor, MarijuanaBreak.com. When it comes to giving your pets the best life, the very first thing that you should do as a pet owner is research. Research is going to help you understand your dog and best friend much better, as well as the products that are available to them on the market. At MarijuanaBreak.com, they teach you all about the intricacies of CBD oil when it comes to your pets. Now, if you're not familiar with what CBD oil is, MarijuanaBreak.com is a great place to start your research. Sometimes, especially when it comes to crate training, some dogs need to be medicated a bit to calm them down. This is especially true for dogs that have long-term chronic illnesses and they find relief through CBD oils. Researching CBD and how it affects dogs is crucial before getting your dog into CBD oils. Look at this wonderful article right here. It gives you three things to know when purchasing CBD for your dogs so that you don't jump into the industry or get your dog a product that you don't really know a lot about. It also expands on ways to give your dog CBD, so if you're not comfortable or you don't understand how to administer CBD, this is a great website that teaches you exactly how to do all that. Maybe you're more curious about how CBD affects dogs and why it's becoming a trend. MarijuanaBreak.com supplies its readers with all sorts of data and information so that you know exactly what you're getting into, so that you're up to date on all the studies and you know exactly how these types of products, especially when it comes to medicine, will affect your doggo. So we really encourage you to give MarijuanaBreak.com a visit if you are thinking about getting your dog into CBD oil, or maybe you just wanna research a little bit more about the product and how it can help you and your best friend. We wanna thank MarijuanaBreak.com for sponsoring today's video. They help us out so much, and not only help us, but help our viewers as well get the research they need when you're trying to learn more about your very best friend. Go ahead, click the link down below in the description. We'll have it there for you so you can get to studying. All right, so here they are right here. The dreaded cage, the dreaded crate that everyone says, I don't even wanna have to deal with this when it comes to Huskies. There are so many bad traits associated with cages. Automatically, people think that cages are really, really bad, but in fact, they're one of the best things that you can teach your Husky. They're one of the best behaviors that they can learn throughout their life. To be crate trained is to be holy with oneself. But there are a ton of mistakes that you can make if you're not crate training your pepperoni pizza well. So today we're gonna go over all of those things. We're gonna talk about that. Now I've got two different crates right here and these are the crates that we use for both of the pepperoni pizzas. Admittedly, one of these crates has flaws and is actually not that great and one of these crates is really good and I would recommend you go out and buy. We're gonna talk about that in one second. First, I wanna get into this and I wanna talk about why people 
people think that crates are absolutely the worst thing in the entire world. Number one, the first thing that people do whenever they think about cages or whenever they get a Huscaroni pizza or an animal like a cute one right here like Britney McSpears, they tend to internalize and think about all of the things that they would feel if they were that dog. I mean, right, we all do it. Whenever you have a pet at home, you kind of always want to put yourself in your pet's shoes. You want to believe that whatever situation they're going through, it's exactly how you would go through it, right? So the last thing you ever want to do is be put inside of a cage. I completely understand that. So the first thing people do is go, dude, I'm never gonna put my dog in a cage because if anyone ever put me in a cage, I'd probably punch them in the face. While that's completely understandable and I completely feel the same way sometimes, you're not a dog and you're also not a hamster, you're not a cat, you're a human being. So there are things that you are able to understand that your dog, your cat, and your hamster will never be able to understand. You have to be able to come to terms with this. That is really important. So because of this, you have to understand and know that Siberian Husky puppies, they don't understand what dangerous things are. They don't understand that they can choke on things, that some things in the world are poisonous to them, that some things could actually harm them like chewing on electric wires. These things do not not come pre-downloaded in a Husky's brain. So to cut a long story short, the best way to protect your Husky from these things, look at Hila, she's like, yeah, it's true. The best way to protect your Husky from these things is to adopt crate training. Now, human beings are already conditioned to think that crates are bad because we associate them kind of like with jail cells, right? It looks like your dog is now in jail and anyone who's in jail in society must be a bad person, like they're being punished for something. So you don't want to punish your doggo or make them think that they're punished just by putting them into a crate. Well, just like the other thing, your dog does not come preconditioned to a cage. So they do not know that being put in one of these is a bad thing. The reason that they scream and cry is because you are limiting their freedoms and they absolutely do not like that. The same way a toddler does not like to have his cake or his candy or his toys taken away. If a toddler screams and cries, are you just gonna give that toddler that toy back immediately and be like, oh my gosh, as long as you're not screaming and crying, I just, I'll give it back to you. No, you're gonna wanna teach that toddler that, guess what, in life sometimes you don't get what you want. And this is exactly that lesson. And most people can't understand that. They attribute a dog screaming and crying, trying to get out of a cage as some sort of desperate act, like they're dying or they're struggling to survive. I promise you that is not the case. Crate training is a very hard process to train your Siberian Husky or any dog to do. It takes a lot of due diligence on your side. You're gonna have to work through all the tough times when your Siberian Husky is screaming and crying. I know a lot of people will put their Husky in a crate and then they'll be like, okay, let's try this. Their Husky will scream, cry, they'll poop, pee all over the crate. And then finally, at the end of the day, you go, I'm never doing that ever again in my life. That is the number one mistake that you can make. Because if you put your Husky in that crate and then they scream and cry and do all those things I just mentioned and you let them out and never put them back in, you just taught them that that behavior will prevent them from having to stay in that crate. So the next time you put them in the crate, they're probably going to scream and cry louder and poop or pee again. Ultimately, you have to ignore that behavior. The only time that a husky or a husky puppy can come out of their crate is when they are done screaming and crying. When you hear absolute silence, when they're done, when they're napping and calmed down, that is when you go into the crate, you reward them and let them out. This is not an overnight process. This is something that takes weeks or even months to teach a dog. Essentially what you're doing is you're just teaching your husky to be patient and that it is okay to be alone. Now I hear tons of you typing on the keyboard going, 60 formula, I could just leave my doggo in, a, in like a room or like put a, a leash around my dog and keep him tied up. Let me address all of these alternatives that everybody tries to go to when it comes to skimping out on crate training. I will tell you this, I have seen Huskies 
do the craziest things when they are not being watched or supervised and they're left alone without being crate trained. They'll tear up beds, they'll destroy things, they'll chew up your shoes, they will destroy anything that you have, anything that you love. So even if you leave them in a bedroom that has barely anything in it, they will probably end up tearing something up. Not only that, Siberian Huskies are infamous for tearing up carpets and even literally tearing up walls. Siberian Huskies will eat into your drywall. I've seen it so many times. I've had so many people hit me up and be like, uh, 60 formula, my dog like just chewed a hole through my wall like he's Andy Dufresne from the Shawshank Redemption. And I'm like, dude, I, I know, you really have to teach your doggo to be crate trained. It ain't no joke. So look, at the end of the day, there's nothing that you can really do to prevent your dog from destroying things. You really gotta learn how to crate train. And let me tell you something, I've seen this a thousand times. People will put their husky like on a leash, like on a lead, and then they'll put that lead attached to the wall, and then they'll have like this leash and their husky attached to the leash so they can't get to things in the room. This is insanely dangerous and one of the biggest no-nos ever because your husky will end up straight final destinationing themselves. And what I mean by that is they will probably eventually accidentally strangle themselves with the leash if you're not careful. So you really, really have to be very careful when it comes to leashing your dog and having no supervision involved. In fact, when it comes to crate training, I don't even recommend that you put a collar on them when they're in the crate, because even a collar could get latched on to one of these little side thingies on a crate and suffocate your dog. So when you are crate training, be sure that there's no toys in there. Don't put any bed stuff in there. Just make it a plain empty crate. That's all you need, I promise you. I know of so many people who like wanna put a thousand pieces of everything in there. It's okay to put like a Kong with peanut butter. I'm down for that, but don't put a thousand plush toys in there. Don't fill it up with beds. Don't do that stuff. Just leave it the way it is, I promise you. That is the number one best way to crate train your Husky. Now, one question I get asked all the time is, what size crates do you get for your dogs? So this is the first crate that I got for Gila. This is really important, okay? These crates are between 41 and 45 inches. They're the large size of the crates. Whenever I go and pick out a crate, it's always the large size. They always say like 41 inches, but these are a cube. You know, it's like a rectangular cube, so, I don't know why they just give you one measurement. I feel like there should be several, like 41 by 43 by 32. It's always just like 41 inches. I, I don't know. Just go with the large, you should be good. Even if you have a husky puppy, they often come with dividers. So your husky puppy only needs to stay in half of one of these when they're little. So many people will sit here and say, that is way too small of a cage for your husky. All your husky needs is room to get up, turn around and lay down. It doesn't need to be a humongous cage because humongous cages encourage your dog to poop or pee in the corner and that is not what you want. They won't want to use the bathroom if they're in a confined space. So that's what's really important there. Now you can see this cage right here. It was the first cage that I trained Gila in and she has absolutely torn it apart. You see this entire front right here, like there's little shards kind of like bending off and I have this pushed away so that it'll never hurt her or anything and I ultimately have to end up clipping these off, which I've done to a lot of this. But look, this is what happens when you get an off-brand crate. And what I mean by off-brand is any of the brands they sell at PetSmart or Petco, typically a Husky can chew right through the bars of one of these crates. So I, it's no joke, Huskies are really, really strong. So when you get a crate, you wanna make sure that it has reinforced steel. And a brand that does reinforce steel crates is Kong. Now I get a lot of people asking me, where can I get the Kong brand crate? I typically find them at PetSmart. That's where they have them. A lot of people look on Amazon. I'm pretty sure they don't have them on Amazon, but they do have them at PetSmart. So if you're looking for the Kong crate, go to PetSmart, ask them if they can order one for you. They're absolutely incredible and they have reinforced steel. So I've never had a problem with the pups bending any of the wires on this crate. This is a big mistake that you can make because if you do go with one of these crates right here, this is exactly what your Husky will do. Just like, yeah, I totally did that. It's super dangerous and you don't really want 
to keep a crate looking like this. The only reason we keep this crate is because Gila is super duper crate trained. This is her crate and she never tries to get out of it or anything. If I ever say cage, she just automatically gets in her cage and she enjoys it. So until she gets a really, really nice one, which we're looking to upgrade soon. Yeah, you're probably gonna get one for Christmas. This is the one that she uses. And this one right over here is Britney Spears's because he was working on crate training for a while. So we had to get him a really good reinforced steel crate and it has done the job. He's really, really good at being crate trained now. Another thing I really wanna stress is keep your crates in the living room or in a social room where you usually hang out. This is going to really encourage your Huskies to hang out in their crates on a regular basis. If you put the crates in a room where you don't even spend any time, the Huskies are never gonna wanna go in there anyways. When I first moved in here, I put both of these crates into the laundry room, which is on the other side of that wall, and both of them not only hated to be in the crates when I was gone, but they never went in there to just sleep and relax. So it's really important to put your Huskies crates in a room where you spend a lot of time. Hila. Cage. Cage. <laughs> he's just speaking, he's like, why we have to go in a cage if you're not going anywhere, broski? Your doggos have to be able to respond to a command like this. It's a really good idea to teach your husky what cage means or what crate means, or you can use any word that you want early on so that they know when to go inside of it. Now, Gila's pretty smart. Typically, whenever I put on my shoes or I grab my keys, she'll automatically just go lay in her crate. And oftentimes, I just find her snoozing in here anyways. And as you can see, it's just open to the entire house. So she can see everything from this crate. It makes her feel way, way comfortable and we always make sure to keep the door open. A couple things I wanna go over when it comes to crate training is this. Like I said, when you start it, do not let your Husky out if they are screaming. That will teach them that screaming will let them out of the crate. If your Husky is screaming for hours and hours and hours on end and it's literally driving you nuts, which is probably going to happen, you can try to put a blanket over the crate. Some Huskies, some dogs, feel much more comfortable with something over the crate so it feels like there's no easy access, like they're not vulnerable from the top or the side. Sometimes this works. Now for some Huskies, it doesn't. It makes them feel more enclosed. It's all up to your dog and you're gonna have to figure it out on your own because each Husky is different. Both my Huskies are okay with the crate being completely open so I don't have to use a blanket, but I do know people who have Huskies and their Huskies do prefer blankets inside the crates. The number one best thing to crate training is sticking to a schedule. I'm telling you guys, if you put your dog in a cage every night at 10 p.m. and you let them out every morning at 7 a.m. and you do that every single day for like two weeks, your doggos are gonna know exactly what they have to do. Every night they're gonna get used to it and the screaming and the crying and the whining and all that stuff that you don't like dealing with is gonna go away really, really quickly. Where most people fail when it comes to crate training is just giving up. You can't handle the screaming, you can't handle the crying. Your Siberian Husky ends up getting the best of you. They howl until you just can't take it anymore. And if you give up, ultimately, you're giving up on your doggo. So keep up with it. Make sure that you're getting them crate trained because in the end, it's gonna keep them safe and it's gonna keep you happy. Now I wanna close out with this. Hi, <laughs> princess. It's a good girl. Whenever your dog is crate trained, you don't have to stick to such a strict schedule anymore. Once they're comfortable with their crate and they're no longer screaming and crying whenever you put them in it, you don't have to make them sleep in the crate every night. You can let them sleep in your bed or sleep wherever they want. Just make sure that your doggo is crate trained. And if they are, then they're able to do whatever they want. That's basically my opinion. Because Gila and Britney Spears, they're both crate trained at this point. So at night, I let them sleep wherever they want. But when they were puppies, it was not that way. I put Gila and Britney Spears in a crate every single night. It was bedtime, just like I had a little itty baby toddler. So I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope it helped you understand the importance of crate training, why we train our dogs to stay in a crate, why it's 
not mean or inhumane in any way. And I wanna say this, cause it's very important. If you are going to crate train, you have the greatest responsibility in the world. You have to make sure that you're not keeping your dog in the crate for longer than four hours at a time. They have to go to the bathroom. They have a right to use the potty. They got a right to do whatever they need to do. So it's your responsibility to make sure that you're on top of that. Don't let your dog sit in a crate for hours and hours on end. That is not humane. It's not right. So if you're going to crate train, you only do it to teach them that when you're not around, they need to just sit and chill in one spot for a little bit. And as long as we're cool with that, I'm cool with you. If you guys have any additional questions about crate training, leave them down below. I'll be sure to answer as many of them as I can. If you guys had fun today, make sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more Doggerona Pizza episodes, if you need more advice on training your Siberian Husky, be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. And we'll see you next time with another episode of Guess What? Yup, you guessed it, whatever we make. Peace. All right, I'll get your brother. Yeah.